talking about keeping things in the front of your mind and talking about dirty and gritty things look at this the legendary club in Shoreditch called Cargo, um, which for most people, I think most people that live in metropolitan areas in London or metropolitan areas, cities, sorry, in the world have a version of Cargo in their city. The place that's basically open until 5, 4 a.m. Um, has various rooms playing various genres all at the same time, all at flipping crazy levels of, in terms of volume where you can just hear it all bleeding into every single room. The acoustics are terrible. Um, all the bartenders hate their jobs, so they serve you terribly. Um, they, they give you drinks in plastic cups that are warm, and it's just like a horror show, right? Every I think every metropolitan city in the world has a version of Cargo. But our version of Cargo in Shoreditch is like a legendary institution because at the time it was one of the only places that you could go to you know, and party basically with some type of music. I think most people, most of my friends that I kind of grew up with, I think everybody at least had one night or one DJing kind of opportunity at short at Cargo. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. Everyone did one night. I know I did, right? And it was an absolute horror show. I don't even think I even got paid for that one. It was just one of those kind of ones you just have to kind of chalk off and say, hey, I got scammed. It is what it is and keep it moving. I think every promoter has one of those kind of things in their sort of uh, promoter book that they kind of been through. But um, over the years, it's gotten worse, mostly because of the bounces, mostly because of the no, mostly because of the security, mostly because of the people that own it, the programming, and basically the people that go there. Right? They just go there, steaming out of their ears and their noses. They're way too on it. They're too. They peaked way too early, as I've done many times beforehand. So I'm not kind of talking at this from a point of, you know, um, superiority or thinking I'm better than I've been there. But going to a place like Shoreditch and peaking too early, especially considering the different groups of people that all kind of descend into that area of east central london it's just a recipe for disaster you know all that testosterone all that female energy everyone trying to impress each other you know act the tough guy it's just it's just too much people high people drunk various ages various backgrounds color creeds all forced into this one area and it's just like it's a horror show and i guess they had this weird entry policy for a time where at one point it was like oh you couldn't let single guys in they had to be with groups of girls you couldn't get let groups of guys in then it was like you couldn't let groups of black guys in you couldn't let groups of eastern european guys in it could let italians in like they went through every kind of racial discrimination sort of entry policy they could go for and in the end it just went a bit of a free-for-all and anytime i went past it especially you know late at night you just see random people and then the other annoying things you'd see all these pushy sort of um street crew people handing out those packets of like flyers and magazines and nonsense right all this kind of stuff that you know is probably going to end up um in some turtle's belly somewhere right in the sea it's just absolute waste of kind of paper and time and they're forcing that down your hand you're like leave me alone security everywhere he's shouting i used to go on the other side of the road like this is a public road just it's a horror show absolute horror show so i'm generally surprised it's hand hand so i'm just surprised it's been it's kind of hanged on this long really am i don't know how it managed it i think maybe a good part had to do with maybe its owners they might be well known i don't really know but definitely mad and this is a good, funny picture because it shows professor green right one rapper here from the uk um pretty terrible artist to be for the most part but it's actually interesting because the scar they're showing as they're written here from underneath the picture he actually got this scar slashed in the face from being outside of chicago so it shows you and again i think at 2009 i guess maybe his star is maybe falling a little bit now again i don't really pay too much attention to the guy don't get me wrong but i would imagine 29 sorry i'd imagine 2009 when he got slashed he was probably quite famous then so to for someone his level of fame to get cut that way in the middle of Shoreditch lets you know just how bad that scene was and again imagine look how close that is to his jugular Jeremy you know I on his neck that that could have been a fatal stabbing and he couldn't have been here anymore so it's just it shows you how fucking wild that place is um it continues here. it says um this is headline courtesy of hackney gazette it says Shoreditch nightclub where professor green was stabbed in his neck has lost its license to operate after bosses failed to crack down on violence and crime at the request of police councillors sitting in hackney's licensing subcommittee decided to take away cargo's license on tuesday december 14th it's funny that cargo's license got taken away before places like you know the alibi and other places up further up in dawson it just goes to show man like the licensing um rules and all that sort of stuff is just so backwards it does nothing makes sense they close down certain spots 
that take you know that kind of fair enough they maybe have some trouble in the beginning or maybe the middle of their time but they do make a concerted effort to maybe correct it and to put things into place so it doesn't happen again and then they get the whip cracked straight away and then they get license taken away or they get the they, they get they don't get the opportunity to stay open for a long period of time just crazy shit that basically kills your business like especially if you're the alibi most people go there that was a basement club in london that i used to kind of do promotion that and dj at sometimes i used to go there all the time right it's a basement bar or like a dive bar most dive bars don't really get popping especially in that kind of area you know until about 11 p.m onwards so if you're limiting the hours that they can serve alcohol so you're limiting the hours of where they can stay open as a nightclub until 12 a.m it effectively kills them because no one's going to be there before 12 there people come usually between the hours of 11 and 3 or 4 a.m when it closes so when they did that sort of thing it basically killed that entire strip of clubs like we had the dance tunnel for a bit that was one of the better clubs in london too that died quickly that kind of you know grand opening grand closing and loads of others birthdays ended up having to go to loads of other places around that area that, again they had their spats of trouble here and there but they did make a concerted effort to try and correct it but then those places closed again way before cargo did even places like plastic people like again that wasn't to do with licensing now i think that was to do with um an investor coming in and buying that building and turning them into shops and shit because i think where plastic people used to be is where basically good hood is that kind of area um but still just think about it all those great places that we had in london clubs wise have closed before cargo has and cargo hasn't even closed it's just lost its license <laughs> i mean they're not even effectively closed for good it's like Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, officers have been regularly meeting with managers of the club in Rivington Street for nearly two years since February 2020. Two year chance since a rise in crime both inside and directly outside the club. The incidents, which include thefts, minor assaults, large scale disorder, and some occasions some violence, make up a disproportionately large number of amount of crime, disorder, public nuisance taking place in the local area. Historically, rapper First Degree, whose real name is Stephen Manderson, was slashed in the neck with a broken bottle in a club in 20. 20- at the club, not in the club, so at the club in 20, 2009, he nearly lost his life and was prompted to get a large tattoo saying lucky over the 15 million, 15 million scar. More recently, levels of crime and disorder have continued despite the best bets efforts. More than 20 police officers have been stationed outside the venue on occasions while at closing time, especially as police order officers have been deployed from other parts of London to control clouds leaving. Just imagine how much of a vibe killer that is to be out on a night out in Shoreditch, right? One of our nicer areas in London, near Liverpool Street, near Old Street, like all these little cool little places, Hoxton, no, Hoxton, Hoxton, whatever those places are, right? Um, you're going to get some good munch, you've got to go get a cocktail bar, and then you want to kind of unwind and kind of dance the night away and go to cargo. And then you, as you walk up, you see just bare lads like just massive amounts of kind of testosterone energy around you see get here girls screeching all over the place so you can't even spot where they are then as you're leaving you then see flipping fluorescent jackets and police everywhere um what you call it um safety wardens whatever the street wardens whatever they're called you see those guys on those station bits where they kind of have a little, little a little kind of elevated platform where they sort of look at the street around you and stuff it's just like oof cctv everywhere like uber's beeping everywhere trying to get through the traffic it's just an absolute horror show of a place to be at according to scotland yard it says no such resources have requ- are required for other single venues in the area and the measures have come with significant cost of police force imagine right imagine the imagine the mind fuck you must go through from going from places like a jaguar shoes to a cargo and i don't get me wrong i, don't, I wouldn't imagine Jaguar shoes and cargo share many clients or share many patrons. I don't, I wouldn't imagine. Maybe apart from some girls, I might like the, the I don't know. I don't, wouldn't imagine boys that go to cargo like going Jaguar. But just imagine the kind of mind fuck it must kind of give you when you go from cargo to, when you go to Jaguar shoes to cargo and you just see the people that are there, the way it's organized, you must be like, oh my God, this is horrible. And they do a good job actually on that street. That whole street, they do a good job. It's like as soon as the clubs close, Oh, when they're open, it's like a horror show out there, right? Kebabs everywhere, people, niggas on the floor, madness. Then as soon as the clubs close, in about half an hour, this from the street cleaners to the people around outside the clubs, they sweep and make that place look spotless. So by the time you're coming back home from somewhere else at three or four, it looks nothing like what it did previously. It's just pretty cool how they, how they do that turnaround-wise. Most of it's to do with the private tenants around. They don't want to piss them off. Last I heard, people like Mishka Barton and shit from the OC lived around the corner, so... I'm sure those people put the pressure on them to keep it clean. It continues, it says, in August, there were 20 thefts and eight violent incidences at the club. 
in August, one month. A comparison of venue with similar capacity at the same area saw so no reports of theft and just two incidents of violences. Uh, sorry, at a pattern which the Met said had begun repeatedly consistently. So that obviously shows that the club took no kind of no heed to the warnings. They didn't put anything in place. Maybe it was the bouncers, you know, letting troublemakers in. Maybe it was just the staff not caring, whatever. They didn't do any, put anything in place that would dissuade or kind of um, prevent those people from coming. And they still were allowed to keep, kept, kept being open. Again, you have to blame the council people a lot. And again, I wonder who owns it. Maybe it's somebody famous, but just think of all the great clubs we lost before Cargo lost, before Cargo eventually ended up having to come to a screeching halt. Inspector Andy Durant thanked residents from Hackney and Tower Hamlets who supported the application to have license reviewed and attended the hearing. So basically, he's thanks all the snitches. Um, the management of Cargo Club did not address key concerns frequently raised by the, met by the police to commit decisions as a result of those repeated failings. So yeah, they're done, man. They're absolutely done. Cargo is finito. And to be honest, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to shed a tear for them because it legitimately was one of the worst clubs in London. And it's really sad too because of the location. It's such a great location. Um, where it's actually is under the arches looks pretty cool, especially with all the graffiti that changes all the time. Um, again, location is great in terms of getting there and going home. Um, it should be a better club, but again, acoustics wise terrible, layout wise terrible. Um, the staff clearly hated their jobs. The drinks were garbage and really uh, over, you know, they overcharged you on the drinks, which, which makes sense for a lot of clubs there, but they didn't even take any care, attention in cocktails. It was just all garbage. Um, the music policy was dog shit. Like everything about it was terrible, really, really terrible. So, you know, it's not a surprise that places like that. Again, look at all these videos, man, of just hordes of people just stampeding. All You can't even see the, like, that's actually a road, you know. You can't even see the road. People just, that's usually, and again, that's not a good way of kind of looking after your club space and stuff. Most places, especially if they're in a busy area, this would always have somebody making sure traffic is kept moving, the road is clear, just to kind of appease the neighbours or to make sure your club doesn't look like an absolute zoo. But look at this, mad, isn't it? Absolute mad pictures on CCTV people are seeing. Um, is there comments here? No, there's not, but yeah. Is there comments? Yeah, there is not. No comments. Okay, I guess people are going to say some mad stuff on there. But yeah, cargo's going to close soon cargo is gonna close soon 